This video is a brief introduction to the Blender Omniverse Connector. The Blender Connector is an add-on which allows reading and writing assets on the Nucleus servers. The add-on provides a Nucleus panel, which is available under the Omniverse tab in the viewport. The Nucleus panel includes buttons to import and export USD, and a sub-panel listing currently open Nucleus connections. I'll start by showing the Nucleus file browser and how we connect to Nucleus. To open the browser, click Import USD, and you see at the top a panel listing default locations. These locations include an Omniverse URI for the local host server, as well as drives on a local computer. The URIs which appear by default in the locations list can be specified in a bookmarks property which can be set in the add-on preferences. So one can manually edit the add-on preferences to add additional servers to the bookmarks so that they will always appear in the locations list. And there's also a way to add bookmarks through the file browser UI which I'll show shortly. To open a connection, one can click the Omnibus URI in a locations list, and we see that once a connection is established, the file list below is populated with the root directories on the server. We see also in the connections panel, under the nucleus panel, that the localhost server has been added as an open connection. So the add-on monitors currently open connections and adds and removes them as necessary from this list. Another way to add a connection is directly through the connections panel. There is an add, there's an open connection operator and I can open a connection to, for example, the OV content server. So I enter the server name and I see that the connection has been established. When I open the file browser again I see that the new connection to OV content is listed in the locations list. A third way to open a connection is to enter the Omnibus URI directly in the file name or the directory properties of the file browser. So for example, I can enter Omniverse colon slash slash OV sandbox in the file name property. And when I hit enter, the connection to OV Sandbox is established. I see the new location to the URI in the locations list, and I see that there are now three open connections to Nucleus. So now I can go over uh, some of the file browser features. So next to the, the currently open directory property, we have buttons which allow navigating to the parent directory, to refresh the contents of the current directory and to create a directory. Uh, in addition, there's a button to add bookmarks. So the locations for the connections that we established during this session will appear in a locations list for this session only. If I want them to appear in a locations list every time I open Blender, I can add them to the bookmarks and I can do this by selecting, for example, OV content and clicking the add to add to bookmarks button. And this server will be available every time I launch Blender. So now let's take a look at how we might import a USD. So we see to the right we have the USD import options. And a very important one to consider is the one listed under textures. So when, Im when importing or exporting USD, the connector takes care of copying textures um, to and from the Nucleus servers. 
So when importing a USD, we have to determine how we want the textures copied to the local computer so that Blender can load them. The default option is to bring them in as packed textures, which means that the texture is first downloaded to a temporary directory and then is packed into the current Blender file. This can be very convenient for relatively small scenes, but can be prohibitively slow and consume too much memory for large scenes or when we have many textures. Another option, which is usually preferred, is to copy the textures. So uh, when I select the Copy Textures option, I can enter a, a, a local textures directory where the textures will be downloaded. Now the Nucleus panel provides a property for specifying the default textures directory for downloading textures. So this is under the project subpanel. I can enter um, a local directory where I want my textures downloaded. So I can say C attic textures, for example. So now every time I import a USD, this is where the textures will be downloaded. And it's typically much more efficient than attempting to pack them. So now to import a prop from Nucleus, I can, for example, go to the attic sample under props. Let's say I want to, ball, to load the ball USD. So um, this list is just a standard Blender UI list. So I can uh, do a search. Uh, I can just search for the ball prop. There, I found it. I select the asset and I click OK. Now, the file browser is implemented as a standard Blender operator properties dialog. So the standard workflow is to set the properties and to then click OK or hit Enter to execute the operator. To cancel, I would hit the Escape key or click outside the dialog. So in this case, I want to proceed, so I click OK. And next, I'm prompted to confirm options for copying textures. Um, so we see that, indeed, um, the mode is set to copy, and it's going to copy to the attic textures directory, which are previously specified. And I click OK to proceed. And here, I've, implement, I've imported the ball prop, and I could confirm that the uh, textures have been loaded. So one thing to keep in mind is that copying textures is usually the slowest part of the import or export. So the initial import or export uh, may, may be slow, as uh, especially if um, there are many textures. Uh, however, once the textures have been cached locally or on a server, subsequent imports and exports of the same USD should be considerably faster. So now let's say I want to um, provide, um, perform some edits on this. So let's say I want to um, deflate this ball a little bit so I can uh, use a sculpt tool to slightly modify the model. And now let's say that I want to export this back to uh, the Nucleus server. So I'll go back to the nu Nucleus panel. I open Export USD. Um, and now I want to export this to a new directory. So I go to localhost under Users Test. And here I can create a new directory for the attic props that I've that I'll be editing. 
So I can use the create directory button to create a new directory and the new directory is automatically opened. Uh, now I can go ahead and save this USD. Um, one thing to note is that the exporter will automatically create any missing parent directories on export. So there are two ways to create directories. You can do it explicitly through the button, or you can simply add parent directories, which will be created automatically. So let's show this. So in this case, um, I want to save this ball USD to a, a subdirectory called props. So ent I enter that as part of the file name, and then I hit enter. Uh, now, when I go to Om an Omniverse app such as Create, I see that there is a uh, this addict directory which I created, which has a prop subdirectory, and the ball USD. Notice that the, there is a textures directory next to it, where all the direct, all the uh, textures have been copied over to the server. And now we can um, open this USD to confirm that it's been loaded. Create a light. So there, here is the um, prop that uh, we exported from Blender. Uh, one thing that uh, I want to point out is that it's also possible to specify a checkpoint message when exporting. So to do so, just enable the checkpoints toggle and I can add um, some sort of description here. So um, sculpted in Blender. And it uh, will query me as to whether I want to overwrite the current USD. I can um, I don't want it to ask me again, so I click uh, Don't Ask Again, and I accept. Um, and now when I go to uh, Create, it notices a new asset has been written. I'll add the uh, distant light again. And now we notice that the in the checkpoints, we have the message that I previously added to say that it was sculpted in Blender. So that concludes a um, brief introduction to the Blender connector. Please see the documentation on all the available features. Thank you very much.